when you when you look at time scale, what would you say is like your your favorite feature? Um, it just works. EM, you know, it's All right. like <laughs> it's 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 one of these things where you don't really have to um you don't really have to spend a lot of time. <laughs> Hello, Florian. Um, I'm super excited to have you here uh, for our first episode of, of, well, we are not sure what it's called yet. Uh, it may be the Timescale podcast. It may be just random people talking. Uh, we we going to figure that out in the, in the future. But I'm, I'm super excited to have you here for, for whatever the first episode is. Um, so maybe, maybe just quickly introduce yourself. Uh, yes, so uh, I'm super excited to be the first uh, episode of the podcast or whatever it is that you're doing. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm Florian Herrings. i um, been a developer for something like 10 years now. I uh, work for startups, big companies, big corporates. And at the moment, I'm building uh, No Code Lytics, which is a, an analytic platform for the site builder Webflow. And we are ingesting a lot of data, and that's why it's going to be very interesting to talk about time scale and how we switched with recently and used it to scale our platform. Right. So you, you mentioned uh, no code analytics. Uh, can you can you go a little bit deeper in in what you do? You said Webflow analytics. Um, yeah. So essentially, you sign up with Webflow you get redirected to some kind of dashboard and boom, everything's there. You have all the data. Uh, we collect all the data already and then you can create metrics to say, oh, I want to know how many people clicked on this button or I want to know how many people viewed this page and there's literally nothing to do for you. Everything's set up. Um, one of the interesting things is Webflow has this concept of CMS. So it's kind of like a database that you insert items into a table and then you can render HTML uh, from that. And we try that automatically. So when people create items in their database and then it displays on their website, it will, be, it will automatically be reflected on the metric um, because we'll, we'll, we know what you are having the database. We know what's displayed, you know what people clicked. So we can say exactly what item has been clicked and where, where, what page, et cetera. Right. Okay. So that means you're collecting a lot of clicks and popular page transitions and stuff like that. Is, is that what you store in, in, in uh, timescale right now? Uh, yes, yes, it is. All right. Um, so how, how did you start? Did you start with timescale in the beginning or how did you, how did you how did your journey go? How did you end up here? Uh, we started with, well, at the beginning, we, we actually didn't know if this was going to work, right? We just built it and see, you know, try to move as quickly as possible. We still are, but at that point, it was really MVP. Uh, so I just went with whatever I know best, and it's Postgres. You know, I, I don't really have uh, much experience with NoSQL or anything like that. So, you know, the classic, boom, Postgres, I've been working with it for years. Let's use this. And uh, right. it worked. I mean, it works really well. But as we started to ingest more and more and more data, it's it just became completely unsustainable. Like we literally um, couldn't uh, handle the queries. So some queries would take 20 minutes. Uh, even if oh, you okay. think that takes forever, it's just it's way too long. So I was looking for a solution. I, I was really, you know, I've looked at everything that people were suggesting. Would be suggesting um, there's a there's there's a there's a, a fairly long list of things to look at. There's probably like three or four that are worth. Uh, my time at that point, that was most my time. Um, right. And Timecare was the, the chosen solution because it's Postgres, basically. <laughs> okay, so so the the reason you chose Timescale in the end is because it's built atop on, on, on Postgres and you wanted to stay in the ecosystem or uh, was yeah. that just because you said you had most experience with it? 
Um, this, 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 I mean, uh, that was one uh, of the big decision factor. But to be honest, I think to begin with, I was reading the documentation of all the different, all the solutions, right? I was trying, like, making like little, small, tiny projects, trying to create a few million rows and see what would happen. Mm -hmm. And as I was reading the documentation of a uh, timescale, I was actually learning things about Postgres, like <laughs> not 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 even related to timescale. I would literally like read these things, and I'd be like, "Hey, I could do that with Postgres," and and I would do it, you know. And I would see a pretty big performance improvement. And mm -hmm. and then I was trying to dig into like this whole concept of you know time series. Uh, this thing called I think it's called PG Partsman. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I have to double check. I can't exactly remember, but essentially, what it does is it creates a table for, let's say, every month, for instance, and you'll store that data for the month only in that table. So when you're querying the month, you query only from that table. And I was kind of like going down the rabbit hole, and I was thinking, my God, this is this is a lot. This is complicated, you know. And and surely someone, someone thought thought, you know, I'm not the only one dealing with. A large amount of time series data. So let's give it a go. Let's try this time scale thing and see what happens. And right. it was literally just like drop in. I didn't change anything. I just spinned up a time scale instance, migrated my data, and then it was working. And the queries were taking like only a few seconds, like five, 10 seconds instead of 20 minutes without me doing right. anything. So <laughs> Oh, that's because uh, you're here, right? I mean, that that is that is the whole point about it, yeah. right? Trying to be as unintrusive as possible, but but making things fast. So you you mentioned Partman, which is the automatic partition management. Uh, you can totally do that in Postgres on your own. But let's let's be blunt. Um, that's no nice game. Um, uh, Partman makes it a little bit easier, but um, Timescale gives you basically that all of that for free. Um, plus all the benefits of, of Postgres. But um, when you did, did you look at anything else? You said you, you you looked at a few of the options, read the documentation. But did you actually try any of the other obvious, com well, other solutions? <laughs> um, yeah, um, we um, we 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 are hosted on uh, AWS. So my go-to was uh, TimeStream, mm -hmm. um, which is a time series. Or by AWS, uh, but there's uh, there's a few limitations that um, I, I didn't want to go for at the moment. Um, for instance, one of the one of the limitation I had was the you can't delete data; it's only inset and upset. Uh, after a certain time, uh, like you define a window, and then that's it. And we, it's very important for us to be GDPR compliant. So being able to delete the data easily, you know, from a user has his website and just says like, you know what, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. And they can delete it immediately, you know, it's quite important. And um, there was Athena, AWS Athena, which I think is probably the closest to what I was looking at. Um, mm -hmm. You. You use something called park parquet, I think parquet files, which are essentially columnar and compressed. So if you're reading only one column, you only get billed for reading that column. And uh, it's compressed, decompressed, encrypted on the fly. It's uh, it's SQL. You can literally write SQL data, but the ingestion process was a little bit. There's a little bit of an overhead. You need to go through something like Kinesis or. Um, <clears throat> this firehose, and then it goes to S3. Then mm -hmm. from S3, you query it. Uh, there is like um, some limitation as well in terms of how many uh, you can query. There's like a number of reads you can do in S3. I was I was kind of like you know spending more and more and more time trying to understand the limitation of the product rather than the features. I was like, oh, so can I do this? Can I do that? And to the point when I was like, you know what, like. Timescale really does the job. It works really well, so I might just go with that. And everything else, you know, we have like a Grafana dashboard, all these sort of things that are set up uh, that rely on Postgres. So it's, right. 
you know, I didn't have to change anything. Um, I looked at something called influx. Mm -hmm. um, but same thing, you know, it's like, oh my God, I need to learn a new tool. I need to learn all these new <laughs> things. And, and, and there's this like list of features and bugs and, and, and all these things I have to do and also learn a completely new way of doing things in a database. So, and that honestly, time stream works well. I have, I have a time series. I have compression. I can, uh, distribute my data. It's, I mean, has everything I need really, um, without having to change anything. So it's perfect. Right. That make, that makes perfect sense. It was kind of the same, same like a uh, story, uh, with my own startup, uh, where we also looked into other things and was like, why, why would I use a new language that I have to learn from ground up instead of just staying with SQL? And it was kind of the same story. Uh, we had Postgres, I love Postgres for years. Um, and I was basically sold uh, the second I, I saw Timescale. Um, uh, you mentioned um, um, a few things, and I'm trying to remember what I wanted to ask, but I completely forgot. So anyway, um, <laughs> um, but I, that that is that is, that was really interesting. So you look into the AWS services, and uh, they they had like certain limitations or you you found more limitations than you than you anticipated um so that's really interesting um on the other hand when you when you look at time scale you said a lot of things literally just work it was a drop in replacement basically when you when you look at time scale what would you say is like your your favorite feature what is the coolest thing you could tell if 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 you um see somebody at on the street and somebody just Asks you like, what is the cool thing about Timescale? Why did you use it, or why do you love it? What would we say? <laughs> um, it just works. TM, you know. It's All right. Like, <laughs> it's 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 one of these things where you don't really have to. Um, you don't really have to spend a lot of time to to learn about it, or to it's more it's more of these things where. You, you you just learn as you go. You just go like, oh, I wish I could do that. Uh, like uh, there's this thing uh, called um, average distinct count. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's because I, uh, we have this thing where when you reach, you know, let's say 200,000 visitors, it doesn't matter if it's 200,002 or 200,001 yeah. or, you know, like these things. So you end up having like this very, uh, I didn't know, but counting things is actually a very serious business. It's very hard in Postgres to just do a count. It's, it's very expensive. Um, so there's this thing that Timescale just provides you just like, okay, boom, you know, like average distinct count, it's it's there already. Um, and it's it's really good to be able to just start using it and then you know you have this huge room for growth, and as I say, like so far for me, it just works. It's just like all the other things I've tried. It was always a little bit like, oh, but how do I do this? How do I do that? Why am I charged? Okay, I'm charged per query and per gigabyte. And uh, wait, uh, so how much? How much is that going to cost me a month? You know, and how many how many queries can I handle from one single instance? And all these things that were kind of like really difficult. The simplicity of timescale is really what makes it shine. Right, and and it's interesting. This like you you you're gonna be charged per query. Um, a lot of the viewers or listeners may be a little bit younger, um, especially or well, including me. Um, I didn't use that, but it was a very common pattern uh, in the mainframe area where you actually had to pay per query. And people hated it, so they started to sell post, and now we're going all back to the same thing. It's it's interesting in technology how stuff always comes back to you. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah, say microservice uh, and soap and and what whatever, right? <laughs> we yeah. had all of that. I guess um, it all depends okay. on how much money you have in the bank and how much you're willing to throw at the problem, right? If uh, it's, it's, it's always small... about money. <laughs> yeah, if you're a small bootstrap startup and, and you're getting started and like we had a, a um, we had like a really big 
uh, customer that signed up one day and uh, like everything went red, you know, all the alerts just triggered. I had something like, I don't remember, but I had like a lot of events in the queue and it was backing up and all those things. And I was like, ooh, okay. Um, okay, let's scale up this and this. And, you know, you can kind of like manage it a little bit. If if I was on like full serverless and paper query, I'll, everything would have been instant, but I would have had to pay like, I don't know, like 10 grand at the end of the month or something like that, you know? And yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good and it's bad at the same time. Right. It's, it's a good problem to have because the customer is signed up. It's a bad problem to have if you need to make sure that you still stay into, in, in, inside the estimated cost. I think that is the actual problem. Yeah, keeping control of your costs is right. uh, is something that is um, remarkably. Um, if you've worked only for big companies or corporates or startups that had, you know, a lot of money, VC funded, etc., it's not really something you think about. Like I, I think for the first five years of my career, I just didn't even think about it. I would just be like, oh, I need yeah. this, click, 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 up, done, it works, you know? Uh, it's only when you actually start paying for it that you <laughs> start realizing how much these things cost and you're just like, oh, okay, yeah. actually, uh, maybe I need to do something and, about this. And, and that is the interesting thing. All the cloud providers make it like super easy to just click without thinking about it, right? It, it doesn't matter if it's AWS or any, anyone else, they all just make it like super simple. Um, but since we already talk about AWS and well, that kind of goes into deployment. We talked a lot about what data and how you store the, or how they can be stored in, in timescale. So how, how is their deployment looking like? What, what is it? Um, the deployment of timescale. Yeah, it's, yeah, right, right. How do you, how do you de uh, deploy timescale? Uh... Well, at the beginning, it was literally just an EC2 instance, mm -hmm. like old fashioned, um, like, 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 uh, I think it's the first time I've done that in my life. I just, uh, you know, just literally spin up an EC2 instance and, uh, manually install something and then connect to it. And I was like, Ooh, it works. Um, and then you start thinking about, oh, but what about high availability? What about uh backup read replicas etc cetera, etc cetera. um so in the end we're using the um, kubernetes uh we're mm -hmm. doing a kubernetes deployment uh which once again uh, like honestly i <laughs> i know i'm uh, i repeat myself but it just works like it's it's impressive like you literally just follow the docs step by step so there's not too many steps um and that's it boom you go like Time scale, read replica, it does some backups. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just really good. All right. Well, I'll, I'll love to hear that, right? Um, I, I mean, there, there is a reason why I joined Time Scale. Uh, I had always the same feeling. Um, I love the product, and now I'm here, right? Um, so, what one thing you said is like really hilarious to me. Uh, you talk about virtual machine set up as old fashioned. That is like super hilarious because <laughs> we don't have virtual machines for well oh, that long. What is it? Like 10, 15 years maybe? Uh, it's it's quite uh, a bit of time in, in in computer technology. I give you that, but old fashioned yeah. is I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's quite uh I mean so I think I started in so my first job was in 09. So yeah and, and we already had oh. uh yeah, so there was the uh, VMware deployment. Uh, to be fair, I was so junior. I was literally getting started. I had no idea what, what was going on here. But I remember about VMware and, and deploying uh, things with PHP when you would drag and drop your file on the right. FTP server. Yeah. And uh, it kind of had like these uh, good things about being instant. Literally, you were just drag and drop files. And yeah, but over time, like I, I, to be honest, when I really started to build CU software, uh, outside of banks, um, it's always been something like um, a container, you know, Docker came right. in and then it kind of like never, never left. Right. 
So uh, you, you said right now it's it's Kubernetes, uh, so KDS. And um, did you use the the uh, timescale Helm chart to deploy that, or did you set it set it up yourself? I um, I have set up my uh, myself because the Helm chart okay. is um, it's good, but. As I said, we're very, really <laughs> mindful about the money we're spending and all those, all those things. And uh, the the arm charts good, but it's spinning up like way too many things. Um, right. So, and I'll... keeping control of things is quite important for me at the moment, at least. You know. Uh, so the arm chart is. Uh, I tried it. It worked really well. And then I was like, Oh, what is this? What is this? What is this? I don't know what this and. Uh, uh, I didn't want to dig into it. But yeah, that makes sense. There's no reason not to use it. It's just more that I, at that point, I was like, okay, I, I spent already so much time um, on all these things. I need to move on and start doing other things. So I just went back to what I know. Um, all right. Well, because... that's that's fair enough. You, you you may like to hear that there is a lot of stuff coming to the Helm chart. Um, so oh, really? it wasn't, yeah, it, it wasn't really maintained nicely for quite a while. Um, uh, but there is some plans in, in optimizing it and, and probably make it available for, for other cloud vendors as well. So for us, it was mostly about, uh, we've been on Azure, uh, so uh, the Helm chart was completely built for AWS. Uh, so we forked it out and, and made some changes ourselves. Um, but I think as far as I heard, at least, there's quite a substantial number of things coming and, and more configuration options. There's more people asking for stuff. Because more people start deploying it in 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 Kubernetes. Yeah, itself. Mm. that's nice. I that's... See, yeah, I did see there's a lot of options, but at that point I was just like, I need a, I need a database, a real replica, and some backup. That's it. Uh -huh. But yeah, it it looks pretty cool as well. I need to, I guess if I get some time, so I'll I'll look into it at some point. So so what what are you using for um for backup and and um for well, managing the the replication and probably failout scenarios. Uh, it's uh, it's a a cron job on Kubernetes that just do, does a pg okay. dump and then uploads it to S3. Oh wow! Okay, that is basic. <laughs> yeah, but it probably just works, right? Um... <laughs> it does it every day? Okay, and uh, there's no. There's no, there's no, I like, I like how simple it is. You know, it just runs, does PG dump, compress it, and then send it to S3. And then if I need to, if I need to roll back or anything like that, I can just download that and I literally restore it from my computer. It's just me. Right. So yeah. Okay. Like, that makes sense. That, ma that makes like perfect sense. We have sense. 20 engineers trying to do rollback to the database every two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you you might be using like PG Backrest or or other tools like that that also give you the the incremental backups. Sometimes yeah. it's nice because it's a little bit easier or a little bit less like um, space consuming because you only exactly, have like. Yes. So I'll have to do that eventually, um, like incremental backups, um, because we'll probably start paying a lot of money or for. To, to be fair, actually, I was looking at it and I was like, I think it, I think it's like one cent per gigabyte or something like that. <laughs> I was I was looking at it and I was like, you know what? Like my time is just more valuable than than yeah. the storage. <laughs> uh, that makes so, that makes perfect sense. I so so that. wait for the new Helm chart. The Helm chart already has all of that built in, so <laughs> you're probably being good at that point in time. All I'm right. Um, yeah, but but in general, I'd say that is a really cool setup. I mean, um, we use KDS. I know a lot of people uh, that that host it in in Kubernetes, and it it as you said, it literally just works. But on the other hand, we are talking about timescale. So have you tried timescale cloud? <laughs> um, yes, I have. Actually, that was my go-to, mm -hmm. and uh, it. Like I'm going to be completely honest with you, it didn't yeah. quite work for some reasons. Um, I, I really don't know why. I spent quite some time with the support trying to understand it. Support is great, by the way, like really good. I think it's just I didn't have the time to be honest to 
spend like a week debugging it. But right. they were very responsive, replying very quickly, very friendly. Um, everyone was really nice. It's just that at that point I was like, you know, I like you gotta get it back into the context of we having the queue backing up and queries taking forever and all these things, you know, everything's on fire. So you need this position. Um but yeah, for some reason the queries, uh the latency was really uh really high mm -hmm. between the EC2 instances and and the database. I do not know why. Um, I know okay, there's VPC peering and things like that, but um, as soon as I moved, uh, I, I started hosting on, on the same EC2 instances, it was pretty much, you know, like one millisecond or sub one milliseconds. So I don't know why. Yeah, well, could be could be maybe data centers. I, I guess you, you guys are probably located in, in European data centers yes. because of GDPR, um, where by the way, um, Timescale Cloud now has, uh, I think, Frankfurt as a zone, ah, um, okay. and, and and we have VPC peering for a while, so that could be a really interesting thing. There's always a tomorrow, right? Maybe maybe just I, go ahead and retry it. <laughs> exactly, yes. But yeah, I haven't tried the VPC peering. Uh, I think we were in the US East, or I don't mm -hmm. remember, but yeah. Um, there, there is only so fast light can go, I exactly. heard. <laughs> yeah. I think there was some some physicists that that claimed that we can't go faster than light. Well, maybe maybe we manage in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so um, okay, so we 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 had um what data is stored. We had how you deploy it. Um, how do you actually design your table? Um, is is that kind of the same thing you did in Postgres before, or did you have to rethink maybe? The design slightly uh, to fit um, better into the, like the the actual time series data management. I um, yes, I had to change the schema. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's time scale specific, but I did learn it from time scale. So <laughs> uh, it's, we love uh, to share exactly <laughs> um, the. I started the project in a very, very uh, standard way, you know, relationship everywhere, uh, foreign keys on, et cetera. And I had that at, at some point, I had like a seven joins on a query. And when you're trying to do seven joins on multi million uh, yeah. rows tables, that just doesn't work. <laughs> it just, it just doesn't work. Like the cost is to the roof. Um, and um, I changed this thing. It's called a, a, a wide, wide table model, mm -hmm. wide versus narrow. And uh, wide table models is essentially uh, just just repeat the data. I don't have a foreign key. So like, one of the examples is the, the device uh, information. Um, instead of having uh, creating a new device in the database and then Creating a reference key, device ID, etc. Just store the device information on the on the row, and mm -hmm. um, it it dramatically increased the speed of the queries. And as as we said before, obviously it's going to it's going to massively increase the amount of data you're going to store. But as we established before, storage is fairly cheap compared to RAM. <laughs> or CPU or your right. time, uh, all these things. So if you, and, and also time scale does compression. So on the top of that, not only you don't pay much for storage compared to memory and stuff like that, but the compression algorithm, I don't know how it works. It's like magic, but it just compresses everything really well. Uh, it's like half of the data. Uh, so it works really well as well. So you may as well just do that. And then the queries become super fast. Like you just go from like several, I think the cost was hundred thousand something. And now it's like a thousand. So it's just massively reduced the cost because I don't have to do this joins on multi-million rows and stuff like that. So wow. you just go from like 30 seconds queries to say like one second. 
Uh, I mean that well. that is that that is basically what you expect when whenever you open a dashboard, you don't want to look at it for like thirty seconds just to get the data graph or the answer you're looking for, right? Um, yes, and obviously the answer sense. to that so many times I had. Oh, why don't you do caching? Why don't you do caching? Why don't you do caching? It's like, <laughs> yes, but it's kind of you know you're not really solving the problem; you're just hiding it. And I think when you when you're have, we, we have customers with a lot of data, like a lot of data, you know, 200,000 mm-hmm. users and stuff like that. We do caching, but for, you know, someone, you know, in terms of, if you think about your user experience, you set up the website and you can kind of like sort of real time see what's happening on your website and stuff like that. When you go, you know, only a thousand visitors. And let's be honest, not, not many people have millions of visitors. So having this thing where it's kind of like somewhat real time, you know, it's not exactly real time, but it doesn't take, you know, half an hour for your data to update. It's uh, it's really nice. Good. Uh, I, I, I think it's a good user experience for a dashboard. All right. All right. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, I think that was all the questions I have. Um, is there anything you want to share with the Postgres or specifically the Timescale community from your side? Anything goes? Um, what I would say is give it a try. When mm-hmm. when I was looking at it at the first time, I was very worried about it. Uh, just because I'm very, I, I guess, um, risk averse. I, I don't like to use the shiny new stuff and, and all the latest tech and stuff like that. Um, I used to, I got burned, and then now I'm like, oh, <laughs> let's stick with the with the, what's what we know best. And it's just Postgres. Like really, it just it's just Postgres. Like if if something goes wrong or if you don't like it, you can immediately revert to Postgres. And the benefits you get is in my opinion, dramatically I would wait the the risk of going for a not so well established, I mean, compared to Postgres, you know, um, database, relatively mm-hmm. speaking. So give it a try. Like, honestly, it's, it's one of the things when you just got to try it and see if it works. And it, if it works, then, then I don't see any reason not to use it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and there's so yeah. many features. Like, if you look at the, what's, what's the name, the toolkit? Mm-hmm. The, the time scale kit, toolkit. Uh, yeah, the time like if you start looking through that, you're like, oh my god, there's so many things I could be doing with this. <laughs> um, and and it's kind of like this, as I said, that, like this progression. You know, you start using it and and you start digging into the documentation, and you're like, oh wow, yeah. it has all these things I could be doing, um, which I think it makes the perfect product for growing startups or or growing products as as you learn about it. Because you don't really know what are going to be your needs when you start the project. You're like, okay, I, I, I know I'm going to need somewhat this and then the direction changing or whatever. And using timescale really allows you, allows me to, to be able to react to what's happening very quickly mm-hmm. without having to rethink everything or rebuild everything. Makes makes perfect sense, and obviously there is a great community and an awesome community team. Yes, the no pun intended. Commu- <laughs> like, it is really good. Um, I mean, the Twitter <laughs> community is uh, small but really nice and very responsive. Uh, I would also check out the Slack channel. Like it's, uh, I, I, uh, I don't always reply. I try to reply sometimes, but there is the, uh, I'm a big fan of the, uh, what's the name? It's like tech design or something like that on, on, uh, uh, technical design, uh, where people ask questions about, Hey, how can I do this? How can I do that? I have this problem. How should I design it? I just find it interesting. Like, I just, I just read it and I'm like, Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, oh I've, had no idea that I, I, you could do that. I, I totally agree with that. And there is so many different options. And I often answer on that channel. Uh, but even yeah, you're very even, active. Even with yeah, well, um, I, I always see your name. I was like, ah, Richard, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I've been before I joined, so I, I don't want to stop that. Um, 
uh, but but even for me, I love learning new stuff and and see what other people came up with as an idea or as a question. Um, because you you never there there is no nowhere the point where you say okay I know everything. Um, and there's always somebody who's better and has a much better idea. And I love to find that put that that situation where like, oh man, that makes sense. Why didn't I come up with that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> In that the past, it was most. Yeah, that happens too often. <laughs> you just look at it, right? And it's like, oh wow, that's so smart. In the past, <laughs> it always happens when you look at new startups and like, oh, why wasn't that my idea? <laughs> yeah. All right, and that was. I think that was a perfect closing. Um, so, uh, w- w- one more thing that I really want to mention: uh, you are working on a blog post uh, that goes way deeper than anything we could talk about today. Um, I'm not sure if it will be up with the with the uh, recording or if it will be like a, either a few days earlier or a few days later, uh, but whenever it's up, uh, we're going to obviously link it uh, in the description. Um, and um, let me see. Um, so if there, if, if, if you're, if the audience wants to learn about no code analytics um, or about you, right. And, and, and ask questions about the design and, and and get your share of mind on something. Uh, where can people find you and the company? Um, Twitter is probably the best. Just hit me on, like yes, yeah, tag me on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I try to post some. I try to keep the um, stuff I'm posting interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you if you hit me up on Twitter, you can ask me any questions about um, about this and. Uh, we have a website, of course, nocodelytic.com, but we also on Twitter as well. So if you just hit me up, uh, or my co-founder, Sawesh, um, on, on Twitter as well, we will be more than happy to answer any question you have. All right. I think we, we're going to uh, share the, the links uh, in the description as well so everyone can find it. It's probably easier than just trying to spell it. So uh, again, uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I love, I loved hearing from you and, and sharing your experiences and, and the way how you ended up here. Um, and I say thank you uh, for everything. Thank you, Chris. That was great. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>